Well, good morning, everybody. This is the Peace with Dementia Rosary, and I, we're here for a special rosary here for June 2020. And I know what you're thinking. They're all special, right? It's it's the rosary, and you're right. But today, uh, we have a, a couple of special, a few, a few special things. So today is the, um, the first time that we have a guest on. I'll tell you about Catherine Fassbender um, a little later. Um, also, today is the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that's very special. And today is the longest day of the year. It is the summer solstice, the, the, the day when we have the most sunlight today, I'm sorry, in the year. Um, and that is significant in the Alzheimer's and dementia community because, uh, and I think it started with the Alzheimer's Association, they've always recognized the longest day because it really represents the long days of caregiving uh, that um, dementia care partners experience. So many special things here today. Um, on the agenda, we're going to um, recite a rosary after we meet Catherine, and then um, she is going to stay around, and we're going to have some de general dementia Q&A if you'll have any general questions, and we are also going to talk to her in depth about creative engagement. That's really her specialty, and I'm really excited to have her on today. Um, I am the author. I didn't mention this. I should. I'm the author of The Peace with Dementia Rosary. It came out in 2019. It's uh, doing very well. Um, and I gauge that not just by the number of books that are selling, but the impact that it's making on persons living with dementia, their families, and their care partners. And I'm getting lots of great feedback about it from, from physicians, from social workers, from care partners. Um, you can check all that out um, at DementiaRosary.com. Also there, you'll find a blog, you'll find a podcast. Um, right now we're on Facebook, but this will be uploaded to YouTube and other other platforms. So make sure you join us on those different platforms. Follow us um, so that you get notifications because we're doing a lot of stuff these days. I also want to mention the Dementia Rosary Daily. So we have uh, daily education, we have weekly education with a blog, and then this is the monthly the kind of the monthly pillar of education that we have here with, with this ministry. The Dementia Rosary Daily is on this same Facebook page um, every day, usually around 8 o'clock, no later than 8.30. And um, that's when we um, say the morning offering together. We pray for any of your intentions. And we also, um, I offer a, uh, a small tip about dementia caregiving. And sometimes it's just a prayer intention that I've grabbed from our dementia prayer wall from the website. So enough about um, that and all the exciting things that we're doing. I'm excited to have Catherine or Kate Fassbender here. Uh, Kate is from uh, originally from Wisconsin, um, and now she is um, Skyping in from uh, Rhode Island. And just a little bit about her before um, I bring her on. She graduated from Edgewood College with a Bachelor's of Science in Art Therapy and a minor in Psychology and Art with continuing studies in music and theater. She is a uh, fellow Time Slips cer uh, certified uh, Time Slips uh, facilitator along myself, and she's also a certified dementia communication specialist and a certified dementia care professional. Kate, welcome to the Peace with Dementia, Ro Peace, <laughs> Peace with Dementia Rosary, uh, monthly rosary. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Thank you for having me. Oh, great. I'm doing awesome. Well, it's my pleasure to have you here. I'm very excited, um, you being our first guest, and um, you bring a lot um, that we're interested in, in hearing about, and hearing about faith, connection, uh, creativity. These are all very important things that I've touched upon in the book and different podcasts, uh, engaging our loved ones to prevent um, helplessness, boredom, and, um, and, and all those things we want to do to engage them and, and give them a life worth living, really, because um, as, as, as you know and I know and the people who are listening know, um, dementia is not a death sentence. It's something that you live with just like other conditions, and uh, we're just trying to help people find hope and peace and make the best of this challenging, uh, challenging situation. So um, Kate, if we if we could um, first begin with um, any family experience with dementia, I understand you had a family member that experienced dementia. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I always like to say I'm a dementia and creative engagement specialist, but I'm also the granddaughter of someone who lived with vascular dementia. Mm -hmm. uh, Fifteen years ago, this July, my grandmother was diagnosed with vascular dementia. 
she had some high blood pressure throughout her life, and um, she had, we, we were blessed to have an amazing doctor that was able to diagnose her with vascular dementia, and then I was able to also walk with her through that journey until she passed away in 2012. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. And, um, and um, you may know this, and my listeners know that it was my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, that had some type of dementia. We're still not sure which subtype it was. Uh, but my mom was the sole care partner for him and, you know, experienced so many things. And while that was, um, you know, not something we would wish on anybody, it's the reason why I'm here now. I, I really wouldn't have thought about it. Although I, you know, I, I really enjoy hanging out with older adults, enjoyed hanging out with my grandparents and their friends. I don't think I would have known about Alzheimer's or dementia or been on this path. So, you know, certainly there's, um, as as in your case, um, as in both cases, you know, there's some good that can come out of these challenges. And now we're we're reaching mm -hmm. many, many people around the world. So I'm grateful yeah. that you're here and, and thank you for sharing that. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Dementia Letters uh, Project. You're the creator of this. Uh, tell, mm -hmm. tell us about when you started it and generally what it's about. And then after the rosary, we're going to get get into the you know, the specifics of the, of the project. Okay, so the Dementia Letters Project formally started in 2017, but it had been previously a life enrichment program that I had developed um, using letter writing as a way to become relational and communicate with family, with oneself, with, you know, the resident or client I was working with. Um, and the Dementia Letters Project today is just the scope of work that I have. And I, I like to say I walk with people on their dementia journey, helping them become wealthy in connection and creativity, hope, joy, and faith. And I do that through three different pillars. The first is through care partner support, um, be it through kind of consulting type things, um, support groups. Uh, the other is education, so training people in creative engagement in dementia, in how to become relational with individuals with dementia, as well as how to help people walk their faith journey, partnering with the dementia journey. And the final component is life enrichment, both development and facilitation, helping communities look beyond the standard programming that we see across this country and moving into great depth of programs that will truly enrich one's life and be something that they want to participate in. All right. Excellent. Thanks. And we are so blessed to have you here. And I can't wait till, uh, till it, later in the segment we can talk in more detail about the different pillars and specifically what you're doing. Um, so as with all the rosaries, um, all the rosaries that we have here, um, we invite your intentions, we invite your comments. Um, so I have on my, uh, kind of on my dashboard, uh, a space where if you leave a comment, such as a question or a prayer intention related to dementia or not, I will see that. And um, we will include those. I will try to include them on the screen. If not, we'll even, we, we will, please know that they will be in the prayers of those who are watching now and those who are watching here in the future. So yes, this is live right now, but it will be uploaded to different platforms. And we're going to include all prayers. So if, if this is tomorrow, if this is Sunday the 21st, or you're watching this um, a week or a year from now, enter your your intentions in the um, in the, any comment section on YouTube, on um, any of the uh, platforms. And please know that those will be included in those. Now, you can also ask questions, um, and that will just depend if I get the notification whether I answer you or not. But we do this every month, and we invite all of your questions and intentions. So we're going to go ahead and get started for our, our sixth rosary. So I invite everyone to grab their rosary beads. I have this one. These, these are a gift um, from a friend from a men's group that I'm in. From that man is you. It's a, a morning group that tens of thousands of guys are in, and uh, this is from uh, this is from the Holy Land. So that's a really nice rosary that I have of many. All right, so we begin, and I'm sorry we don't have the rosary three thousand graphic that we've had the last couple of months, and uh, but hopefully we'll be able to shrink that and add it. So that's something my son Avery helped me help me create so we can keep track. Um, but I'm going to do my best to um, guide you through the rosary if this is your first time. Um, I'll try to give you some prompts, um, and, uh, and you can always find the prayers online if you want to follow along, or you can just listen in peace. So we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we begin on the first bead. 
I'm sorry, we're on, we're on the crucifix, and we're going to begin with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of, heaven and, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, while he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And we're going to the first bead above the crucifix. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now we're going to go to the three, um, the next three beads. These are going to be, all be Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And then we'll, we'll do the Glory Be and then the Fatima Prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Lead all, forgive us our sins. Lead all souls to heaven. Let me start over. <laughs> Yeah, so we got it. This is the first time we're doing a uh, the 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 dual the dual one. So we're splitting up the prayers, right? Oh, um, <laughs> oh Jesus, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, lead all souls to heaven, especially those especially in, those. in most need of Thy mercy. Amen. Okay, I need that was my fault. I need to stop early. <laughs> all right, we'll get that right. All right, so now we. Um, All right, so here we are at the first of the joyful mysteries. And before we say our, our Father, um, this is the intention from, uh, from the book. Each book has education and an intention. And the first joyful mystery is the, uh, is the Annunciation. And here is the intention from the book. Our Lady, uh, our Lady of the Annunciation, we pray that we have the courage to seek medical advice, even when we do not want to think about the possibility of dementia. We pray that care partners can persuade uh, their loved ones to attend the medical appointment and that they have the strength if there is news that we do not wish to hear. We also uh, keep doctors and other medical professionals in our intentions that they communicate a diagnosis with courage, clarity, and sensitivity. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now we're going to say um, a decade or ten Hail Marys. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. All right, that brings us to the second joyful mystery, which is the visitation. So I encourage you, if you're watching, I know there are some people watching, um, leave some comments, questions, um, some prayer intentions. All right, these are the intentions from the book regarding the visitation, the second joyful mystery. Queen of Heaven, let us appreciate the family and friends that stay present in our lives. Please give us the strength and the courage when the visits are uncomfortable. Help them to make the sacrifice and understand that simply being present shows love and compassion. We pray that persons living with dementia and their care partners also have the fortitude to invite family and friends closer and to not isolate themselves due to embarrassment or stigma. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. All right, next is the third joyful mystery, the Nativity of our Lord. The education from the book, I'm sorry, the intention from the book. Lady of Fatima, we pray for peace of mind for the person living, living with dementia, that they can enjoy their autonomy as long as possible, doing what they can for themselves. As they begin, uh, as they become more deep, dependent, we pray that they accept our health, help and do not feel like a burden. As care partners, we ask for patience as we allow our loved ones to do what they can for themselves, even if a task takes longer and causes more stress for us. We also pray that we continue to engage our loved ones with activities that are, that are tailored to their interests and abilities. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, <clears throat> and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. All right, and we go on to the fourth of the joyful mysteries. But first, we have a prayer intention 
and I'm going to add to the page. So Ann Harrison, thank you for your intention. We're certainly praying for that. Put it right there. All right, so if you send us a prayer intention or a question, this is what it's going to look like. It will be on the screen for us to pray for. All right, so the fourth joyful mystery is the presentation of Jesus. And here is the intention. Well, first, let's read Anne's. I know you can read it, but let's read it. Um, praying for all those in most need of our prayers. Amen. From the book, <clears throat> Mother of Mercy, please give the person living with dementia and their care partner the courage to tell others of the condition when the time is right. Help us to speak frankly and passionately with our family, friends, and community that there is still life to be lived. Allow us to reduce the, st the stigma and any shame associated with dementia. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all things to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. All right, and now we're at the fifth and final of the joyful mysteries, and that's finding Jesus. <clears throat> Remember, you can still add intentions um, watching this live here, and we put it up on the screen, or if this is a, an archive or broad, uh, a recording that you're watching, we encur still encourage you to add your intentions no matter what platform that you're on. All right, so here's the intention from the, um, from the Fifth Joyful Mysteries from the Peace with Dementia Rosary. O oh, Blessed Virgin Mary, as persons living with dementia and care partners, we pray that we can successfully meditate 
and find meaning in our challenging situation. We understand that this will require fortitude, perseverance, and putting aside our sadness and anger for the moment. Fill us with your grace to reach this goal. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. And lead all souls to heaven, especially those in the most need of thy mercy. All right, so that's the conclusion of the decades, and now there are three concluding prayers, and I'll say, um, I'll say the next one. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, her life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mournings, and weepings in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Holy Mary, Mother of God. O, o clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be praying for the promise of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the reward of eternal salvation. Grant we beseech thee that while meditating on these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may both imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone that ever fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not my petitions with your love and mercy. Hear and answer me. Amen. St. Dimpna, patron saint of brain disorders. Pray for us. St. John the Evangelist, patron saint of care partners. Pray for us. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So um, if, you, if, if you weren't with us on, on May the 15th, that was the feast day of St. Dipna. You can pronounce it Dim, Dimphna or Dipna. So she is our patroness. And if you look over my shoulder on the bookshelf, um, I have a candle of St. Dipna that I just received and was blessed. So uh, this is the debut of that special candle. And uh, we ask for her intercession as well as um, St. John the Evangelist. All right. So thank you all for joining us. We'll continue to uh, to accept your um, your intentions um, as well as your questions. And uh, let's see. All right. So let's let's learn um, a little bit more about Kate, um, her ministry, her, her special work up in Rhode Island. And um, so tell us. So you, you gave us a, a brief description of the Dementia Letters Project. Um, mm -hmm. You named the three pillars. Can you go through each mm -hmm. of them briefly and just kind of expand, let us know uh, what, what those pillars mean, what they entail? Yeah, so they're, in many ways, they're all intertwined because there's a lot of overlapping themes that run throughout. Um, the first one that I mentioned was the care partner support. Um, and I do that through one-on-one -on -one calls with care partners. I do that by, um, if there's somebody that is looking for to, to build their, their dementia ensemble, their dementia care team. They need a new doctor. They're looking for a chaplain or a spiritual director that might visit a loved one. Um, they're, they're looking for support from themselves, either mental health, physical health. I, I have kind of, I've gathered some resources that I can help direct them so that they can live like fully, you know, even while still being a care partner, be it their loved ones living with them living in their own home or living in a care community because even if we know that even if their loved one is in a care community, they are still very much the care partner for that loved one. So that's the first part that I do. Um, the second is the education. And I, I noticed early on the lack of dementia education and uh, continuing education for those in the aging and dementia profession. Um, I started off my career as a life enrichment specialist and I was given about a 10 minute video about dementia and then told to go work on a floor that about 70% of the residents had dementia. And if it weren't for my prior experience, I think I would have been completely out of water and likely would not have been able to be present for those individuals the way that they deserve or the way that I know I'm capable of being. So I have created kind of a series of edu uh, education <coughs> workshops that help people, no matter what setting they're in, learn about dementia, learn about creative engagement, and the foundation of everyone goes is how I become relational with someone with dementia. Because we know unless we become relational, we cannot provide the care that that person deserves or that we are fully capable of offering them. So I have, and it's all kind of theme-based, too. I, there was a gentleman that I remember working with who, um, who always, talk about how he wasn't wealthy. He was just, you know, he was poor his entire life. He barely made it through financially. And he was washing other people on the floor who had, you know, the corner room was back to view and it was a private suite and he had to have a roommate, a share a bathroom. And I've always wanted him, he's a wealthy friendship. Look at all these friends you have, not only in this community, but also that come to visit you. Your wealthy and creativity. Think of all how you contributed to stories that we are creating um, week after week. And so I kind of thought of we need to reframe what wealth is, especially when working in aging and dementia. And so I have the first training that I created from my cat training is wealth, um, well become wealth, becoming wealthy and creativity. And so that's the creative engagement training that I lead. And it's all about how do we take a program like Bingo and expand upon it to enter into that creative mode to make it so that if we're offering it, it's because the residents truly want it. Mm -hmm. um, but if not, how do we how do we dream up something that can replace Bingo that more people might be connected to or it might connect on a deeper on a deeper level. So it's all about creative engagement. I have another one that's wealth and connection. And that is really how do we build relationships with individuals with dementia? And how do we 
best serve them, but not only tapping into that emotional memory, which we know um, doesn't really go away with dementia. There's always that piece there. Mm -hmm. But also, how do we cultivate community and connections with family members and help family members continue the relationship that they started with mom and dad or grandma or sister? Um, and then I have another one, which is wealthy in space. And that kind of also um, inspired another branch of the work, which is the Heaven of Christ ministry that I have created, which is serving those with dementia on their faith journey. Um, because there is kind of this notion that they have dementia, so therefore they can't remember the prayer that mass. They, they don't know how to say the rosary anymore. When we, we know that that's false, that's not true. And so how do we support them? How do we help them stay connected to the parish that they dedicated their life serving? Um, how do we help them find others that kind of walk with them on that dementia journey? And so the training really is about broadening that that limited view that some people have to say, yes, faith is definitely part of the dementia journey. And for those who grew up and live their life, you know, a faithful person to then strip that away because you now dementia can actually cause some harm and some tension. Um, and which ultimately leads to what some people say is behavioral issues. We know, you know, it's not behavioral issues, there's just longing and seeking that, that connection to faith that they always had. Uh, the final pillar is kind of taps into that core, the art therapy uh, study that I did, the drum therapy study that I did, um, in that it's helping people uh, develop a life enrichment program that does tap into to what the residents want. So for the entire group of people who they happen to be farmers and school teachers, well, what programs can we do to tap into that life purpose mm -hmm. that they still wish to live? Um, so I help them create new programming, and I also facilitate programming. This is where time slip sneaks in. I'll be going to a care community and leave a time slip session either one-on-one -on -one or, or in a group. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so much to unpack there. Um, yeah, there's so much... Uh, evidence, research evidence, um, ev uh, research literature that tells us that religion, spirituality are important. Uh, that it doesn't just go away. Um, and right. and then there's the anecdotal where you know we you know I know we have several stories about uh, persons li living with dementia remembering their prayers, remembering the rosary, feeling mm -hmm. feeling comfortable when saying their rosary. Um, that might that mm -hmm. might be one of the few things that you know gives them comfort because they've been doing it um, sometimes since childhood. Um, why do you think uh, faith sometimes gets pushed aside um, when someone's living with dementia? Do you have any any thoughts on that? I have I have some ideas. None of them I, I haven't explored them to see if they're one hundred percent accurate. But oh, I think sure. it's a combination of. You know, the medical world is, in many ways, very secular. And so it's, they don't believe in prayer, they don't believe in religion, or they may be a different religion than the person they're serving, and so they don't see their religion as valuable. And so it's just not talked about. It kind of gets split to, falls through the cracks because it's not seen as, as something that they can pursue in a way that they pursue traditional medicine. Um, there is, I also notice, well, I'm spiritual, but not religious. And mm -hmm. so they'll say, well, the spiritual side, that's meditation. We'll do chair yoga and you're forgetting prayer, and which prayer is a form of meditation in many, many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, so I think there's that component. I think there's also just a component of fear and the unknown. They don't know, you know, when a care partner might bring a loved one into church, Will all of a sudden they start getting up and wandering? Well, then does that put shame on me? I don't want to deal with that. I don't know how to do that. Or what if we, you know, we go to church and they don't remember anything and so we have to leave? And so I think there's a lot of fear, and that's where the education is really important to say, well, this is how we can better, better serve those living with dementia, better serve um, their care partners through education. And the one thing that we forget about especially with the Catholic Mass, is that when you attend Mass, every, your senses are all engaged. There are sounds, there are sights, there's the, the prayers and the music have that rhythm, and we know because there is 
research and evidence that that music really and that you know like poetry reciting poetry you have people that can't speak that all of a sudden can sing mm -hmm. or that can't really move and all of a sudden the song plays and they can dance and so by attending mass or even other religious services that piece taps into that part of that person's brain and helps them participate there's also again that emotional memory component where this is something that was so intertwined into who they are and to their upbringing and their life that you can kind of just snap into it, so to speak. I mean, there, it's not to say that it's always going to be flawless, that your loved one might not get up and, you know, wander to the back of church in the middle of mass, but, but there is a sort of special focus, I've noticed, for individuals coming to, when they come to mass. They, they know they know the role that they can play while they're there and what they're supposed to do. They know roughly the rhythm of the of the mass. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I don't know if that answered your question. I feel like yeah, I kind of went off there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, you know, you go ahead. Okay, and also I think as you know, as people of faith, there is intervention from the Holy Spirit. I believe. When individuals do go, do go to mass, that there there's something very special that happens there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I talk about the research, right? But we don't want to forget about the actual, the supernatural, the the Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. you know that is that is why why we're here. So I'm glad that mm -hmm. you mentioned that. And then I and I agree with your um, your ideas on your thoughts on why um, faith sometimes get gets pushed aside and it's something I'll add to it. What I've observed is that um, providers, practitioners, no matter no, whatever, at whatever level, whatever their social workers mm -hmm. or physicians, nurses, um, et cetera, they are, there's a fear that they're going to offend somebody if they bring mm -hmm. up faith or religion when in actuality, and I talk about this in, in some, in some of the talks that I've done before that are not. So I have, my ministry is Catholic and, but mm -hmm. I've given talks where I present the evidence for a whole, a whole range of faiths or no faith where I'm with professionals mm -hmm. and care partners where, um, where there's CEU talks where you can't really, you know, you can't favor one religion. Um, so there the idea is communicating the idea that religion and spirituality is a, 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 an important domain just as is um, uh, social domain and the psychological domain and the... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, intellectual engagement domain and the physical, right? The, the physical. So, so we're forgetting in this whole, in the, the, you know, to be well-rounded, to, to include the whole, you know, person, we need to in, include that and we need to at least inquire. And how we do that, I talk about being, you know, it could just be very something simple like, or do you practice any particular religion? And then if they say no, then, you know, you know, you don't have to focus on that. But if they do, it's, it's, it's really our duty to explore that further. Um, and when I developed that particular talk, it was really taking things from the social worker literature and from their, from, from their duty, which is <clears throat> to meet the, meet the client where they are. Um, mm -hmm. and, and which includes, uh, you know, not pushing religion on them, but also making sure that you're asking about it so that you include that in there. And I think, Right. If people um, know, it, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's okay to, that it really is our duty to ask the question. It's not just an option; it's really a duty if we want mm -hmm. to be a good practitioner of any of any field. Um, but also, you don't mm -hmm. have to be an expert uh, in that in that religion. If someone, it, it could right. be, I think, just bringing it up um, might bring it to bring it to uh, bring it to the forefront for that person mm -hmm. and for the family to then take it from there. Like it might be mm -hmm. to go see, uh, to, to go to your um, house of wor house of worship and to, to explore things there. Now, if they want to talk about Catholic, you know, that's, you know, that's my wheelhouse. That's your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. And we can go to yeah. town on that, but really just bringing it up. Um, and mm -hmm. when I have coaching calls with care partners and families, and I had one just the other day, I make sure that um, in this, like in the, in the, this like pre questionnaire that we have um, via email is we ask about uh, do you practice a particular faith and if they do the the other question is do you want to say do you want to pray in the beginning 
is it okay mm -hmm. if we do that? And, um, and, and most of the time people will, will say, yes, we do want to say a prayer. So I don't want to push it on someone, but it's really my duty to, to bring that out. And also it helps me as a, um, as a coach and consultant to um, add recommendations for them. So for this particular family, what I was able to do is to uh, say, okay, so you're Catholic and you're practicing, this is important to you, which, which, is, which is, you know, a real blessing, you know, that they answer in the yeah. affirmative. It's like, uh, and so in the recommendations in our conversation, it's always, um, let's make sure that the priest is coming, coming to the home. If you can't get out to the church, mm -hmm. let's make sure the priest is coming out on a regular basis for the for sacrament of reconciliation. Let's make sure mm -hmm. that um, uh, he's bringing um, the Eucharist uh, when he mm -hmm. does that, and, and even on a more often basis. Um, and then um, anointing of the sick, which many people think that this is when you're on your deathbed there you know there's different sacraments there's a different sacrament for that but you know someone with a chronic condition and certainly any of the dementias um, qualify for that you know I, I, so i encourage mm -hmm. those three sacraments in particular to talk with your yeah. to talk with your pastor about doing so mm -hmm. so it's just too important to not it's important here i think on earth for the healing but also um for for um for our salvation it's you know my duty Mm -hmm. to, to really bring that up so yeah absolutely let's see um tell, tell us about um time slips and i mentioned i'm also mm -hmm. a time slips facilitator and i'll kind of um add my take on it as well but i wanted you to go first and, and, and tell everybody basically what it is and, yeah. and how you got into it okay so time slips in a very brief way of saying it is storytelling process that uses an image to prompt creativity um, with part and partnering asking beautiful questions to kind of get the ball rolling. So in, when I use time slips, I use more than just images. I'll also use artwork. And I find that artwork can, you know, especially, you know, portraits like John Singer Sargent's portraits can create lots of really interesting stories. So the image should have some movement and it really should not have anybody recognizable. So you shouldn't just bring up a picture of the rat pack and say, hey, let's, let's tell a story right. about these individuals because no will try to go back, who were these people really? And what was their what was their life like instead of just dreaming up something new? And so I'll bring this image in and I always check in to make sure that they, they the person likes the image because if they don't like the image, we're not really going to go much further. So bring in the image and I usually start by after I, after I know that they like the image, I'll say, what do you think the air feels like for that person? You do they feel a breeze? You will know, start asking questions about the senses and then we just go from there. Sometimes you know asking that one question and suddenly the group is off. And we now have a name for the individuals. We know they're full you know, where they grew up, where they went to school, are they married, are they not married, you know, what mm -hmm. time of day it is even. Um, and other times it takes a little more guidance and by asking questions kind of based off of what, what they had already given you. So you almost enter into a, an improv yes and type, type play with them. And so you, you know, they may get so far, they, they have named the person, they have figured out kind of where the person is located. Well, let's create, you know, what do you, where do you think they came from? If, they're, if it's clear that they're walking somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you're know, going with that and allowing them to just enter into this creative space that allows them to, when the story's done, have that feeling of, I created something today. And that's where I also like to um, print off, you know, type up and print off the story and make sure that everyone that participates is, has a copy, so they have something tangible to say, I created it, and they can give it to a family member and say, hey, this is what I did today. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, it, it trickles long after, you know, the, the fest is long after the story session is actually closed. Yeah, excellent. I'm, uh, I'm trying to pull up one of my stories um, from, okay, I found it. All right, I'm going to try to share it. I'm, I'm going to press a button, and I'm not sure if the whole our whole um, session here is going to blow up or not, but we'll hopefully not. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to share my screen to share this one story and the picture. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
I don't, okay, I don't, I don't know if you can see it um, unless you're watching Facebook on another monitor, but um, the audience can see it. All right, so here, so here's an example of um, of a, one of these pictures that Kate was talking about. Like we don't know who this person is, so they're not going to try to reach back in their memory and try to think about this specific person. And I'll read the story for you very briefly. Um, and this is all again. This is all. Uh, this was all created by persons living with dementia, a group of them, and by um, in this case it was me as the facilitator asking them questions and writing down just everything. So there's no wrong. Uh, there's no wrong answer. So here we go. This story takes place in 2015, the big band era. The lady's name is the Jitterbug, and she's also, she is on Canal Street and on the levee in New Orleans during carnival time. There's a band behind her whose name is Dorsey Miller Lombardo. It sounds noisy and QL. The Jitterbug is not married, but she could be married to a man named OK and have two children named Vaughn and Train. She's very happy and making a fool of herself in front of the musicians. People are dancing all over in the hot weather. And this was created in Mandeville in March of 2015. So, uh, so uh, yeah, that being five years ago. So that was, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that one. That's when I first started. That was one as I was going through the practicum and everything. Because you do some online training, as you know, and, uh, and then do the training. So that's kind of that's that's also for people who are interested in um, learning more about time slips at timeslips.org. So quick plug for them. We both approve yeah. of them. And what's interesting in the story is, uh, like I said, um, as I said, no, there is no, there's no wrong, there's no wrong answer. And you probably heard some things in there that didn't make any sense. But if you could see the um, the laughter um, and mm -hmm. just how excited people are when you when they say something and you write it down, and these this might these might be people who are used to saying something but not being validated, not feeling heard, not being responded to, um, not because anybody's trying to be mean, but because you know people are busy or people don't really understand the importance of it, except for you know a small percentage. So. That is time mm -hmm. slips, and um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm really excited when I get to do that. I don't do it enough, uh, nearly enough as I as I would like to. Um, Kate, what would you say if? Um, and this might be the might might be the last question, but I also want to see if you had okay. anything else to add. Mm -hmm. If if someone's loved one is in a care community, whether it's memory care, assisted living, a nursing facility, etc., they're and they're not doing things to uh, creatively engage the loved ones, not just yours or our loved one, but the, mm -hmm. you know, the whole place. What, what do you suggest? How can they as consumers and advocates um, mm -hmm. plant that seed for them? Yeah, I think um, having worked in life enrichment, I know if I was on that team, I would greatly respect that, that care partner, that loved one to come to either the life immersion specialist or a uh, life immersion manager and kind of bring it to their attention. Now, they as staff should kind of be aware of that already, but sometimes it takes hearing it from a family member to really get the ball moving so that the rest of the organization is on board. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, you kind of continuing the support for Time Slip. Uh, Ann Basing, who created Time Slip, um, and her team are doing some incredible work right now. And so just by going to timeslips.org, you can find a plethora of activities that you can do yourself with your loved one. Or if you have, you know, a son or a daughter that could go visit, you know, they can do it. The whole family can get involved that way. And I think that, you know, in, in how I have witness time slips in the past is it kind of has this ripple effect where if one person really starts getting engaged and doing it, all of a sudden the rest of the community wants to be involved in something like that. And that as a care partner, as a family member, it's probably the best way you can create change within the organization because oftentimes, you know, they the the team doesn't get approval to do things unless there's heavy research behind it. Or if it's something that doesn't is perceived as easy or is one of the standard programs. And sometimes it takes that family member to start that ripple effect to really create change, not just for your loved one, mm -hmm. but for but for everyone involved. Um, beyond that, 
I think it really just, just depends on the individual. If they're a person who loves music, find ways for them to continue to learn about music. If, you know, and it all, I guess it, it really would have to depend on, okay, where, where is that person in their dementia journey and what, what can they do? Um, but lean into parts of them that, you know, when you think of that loved one, what do you think of? Do you think of art? Do you think of music? Do you think of, um, reading? Do you think of, you know, crossword puzzles? What do you think of? And try to find ways to help them continue to do that because through that, you will, you'll be able to start again, another ripple effect of, of changing the way that they current, currently live. Um, cause the goal of the end of the day is not to have the most creative program or the most extravagant, you know, time with them, but it's to really tap into who are they? What do they love? What has been their life story? And who do they, even with dementia, want to continue to become throughout the, you know, from now until the time when they take their last breath? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's really small things, just like, you know, uh, having them read a poem a day or reading a poem to them, calling them up and reading a poem to them. Or, you know, sometimes it's, it's going in there and just, looking at an old art book, you know, that can mm -hmm. do a lot of good. It doesn't take a lot of time or money. It's just simple acts that can be the most beneficial in many, many ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and I talk about this in most of my education. So the education that you and I um, put out there and even our conversation right now, we're really getting mm -hmm. down to principles of engagement. Um, and I say that because, um, our, all of our loved ones, they're, um, they're unique. They have unique interests. They have unique medical conditions. So while what Kate and I are talking about right now may not fit exactly what the situation is, kind of see the overall principle and foundation of what we're talking about and see how you can tailor it because it's really about person-centeredness. It's about what that person enjoys, what that person's life history is. Um, mm -hmm. uh, before we wrap up with a um, with a prayer, did you, is, is there anything? And uh, and I want to encourage everybody to um, follow Kate. Find all of her social media platforms at uh, at dementia letters project dot com. That's on that's on the screen mm -hmm. right now. Visit that for more about the three pillars, all of her work, all the platforms. So please visit her. Please keep us in mind. DementiaRosary dot com and all of our education on Facebook and YouTube, etc. Um, so before the prayer, is there anything else I left out that you wanted to mention? I don't think so. Thank you for having me join you this morning. It's been a while since I've called out a rosary, so it's a little kind of, you know, so you're back in that rhythm. And as you were mentioning your your rosary, I realized while we were in the middle of praying that the rosary that I'm using um, was actually given to me by my grandmother who had vascular dementia. Oh, wow. So, how fitting is that? Yeah, very providential. That's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. And um, so I appreciate your time. We will uh, we will close for a prayer um, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, on the longest day of the year, and especially on the feast day of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, please bless everybody who watches this especially if they like and share this. Please bless all of the intentions um, that people enter in the, into the comments on YouTube, Facebook, or other platforms. Um, please bless all the prayers that are at um, on the prayer wall at DementiaRosary.com. And um, please bless Kate and myself and our ministries that we may do this for the glory of God and for the impact of family members and persons living with dementia, not just for our, um, our notoriety. In your name, uh, we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Kate, thanks Amen. again for joining. It was a pleasure to have you here. Um, I hope we can do this and some other uh, videos again in the future. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, have a blessed day. Hey, you too. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.